Today I've got a power block Briggs and Stratton 5 horsepower. It's one of those uh, chipper shredder. Uh, power Pro is the name on the top, but uh, obviously it's an MTD product as most things are. Um, got this from a neighbor who was moving away and uh, she said it hasn't run in no, no telling how long. Uh, and it kind of shows. Um, like the spark plug has got rust on it. Actually, is it loose? No. Uh, you know, muffler's got some rust. It's just dirty. Um, can't tell what's all going on with these little gadgets yet. Looks like you can move that chute. I think a lot of these you can drop that chute down to the ground and kind of rake things in there. Um, it's got the bag, which is kind of nice. Looks a little rough, but uh, not too bad. Um, engine, let's see. You know about it what I know about it. And it doesn't spin. So, most likely we got a rusty cylinder. I don't know if it was living inside or outside. Um, the rust on the spark plug would make me think outside. But it's not that dirty, so maybe inside. Anyway, so we'll see if we can get it to spin over and uh, just see if we can resurrect this thing into anything usable. Um, looks like it used to have a probably a flapper for the door here. So stuff doesn't fly back out at you. That's long gone. Um, the wheels rolled. Other than that, you know about it what I know about it. I literally haven't looked at it until just now. So let's see, let's get into it and see if we can make anything out of it. Okay, I take that back. It does spin. It's just completely full of water. I can hear it sloshing around in there. And if you look down on the bag there, there's some water coming out. So let me uh, let me get that uh, tip to the side for a while there. So that tells me uh, obviously it was either sitting out or in a shed that was leaking badly. So probably didn't do it any favors. Okay, not sure why I didn't take the bag out, being that I was tipping it that way. So now I got a nice wet bag to deal with. Uh, but. Uh, We'll just start doing the usual check for spark, check the fuel, check oil. Let's check the oil. I just tipped it to the side, so I'm going to have to wipe it off. And I spun it. Weird springy looking. Don't have a rag, so that'll have to do. Okay. Oil looks good. Somebody either didn't use it much or was taking reasonable care about it care of it. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is probably just change that spark plug because it looks rusty. Alright, let's get into this spark plug. Classic J19LM. This is an older machine. I can tell just by the plug it uses. Yeah, the plug uh, looks like it was burning reasonably well at the last time it ran. I don't see any signs of real bad oil or anything, but uh, I'm just going to replace it regardless. And I should have blown this off before so I don't get junk in there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put that old plug back in. I'm going to blow that off a little bit because I'm going to be pulling it over to check for spark and I don't want any stuff to get sucked in there. Okay, so I'm just going to check for spark here. Don't need my socket on there to check for spark. I'm in bright sun, so I may have to move this. Sometimes you can even hear it go tick, 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 tick if you got good spark. I'm not expecting any issues, but uh, here, let's turn the throttle on so that's not killing it. Try to come over here in the shade a little bit. Yeah, I think I saw something there. Okay. It's difficult to tell in the sun. Just try to stay out here so it shows up good on the camera. I'm 
I'm going to pop that air filter, see if we got any bad things going on in there. Oh, so this has got some runtime on it. More than I would have thought. That that filter is absolutely ruined. Yeah, this has got more runtime on it than I thought. It's dirtier than I would expect. And there's been some water in here over the years. This filter is pretty pretty plugged up. There's more stuff in there than you would think. No sense putting that anything there back together. Let's look at the tank. And I can see in there, it's got the foam baffle. I don't think there's any fuel in there, but let me try to get a flashlight in there and see if I can see what I see, uh, get you a shot. Now just to show you what we're looking at here, I'm gonna try to get you in that carburetor, or in the fuel tank rather. Um, I see a bug in there. It's relatively shiny down there yet. Uh, not water has been sitting in there, or st nor stale fuel. So I think we're going to be okay. Um, this is the old kind of carburetor that I actually love the design. The tank is underneath the carburetor. There is no float. There is no needle in seat. Pulses from the engine go through some diaphragms on the bo uh, bottom of this thing. Creates a fuel pump effect. Pumps up the fuel, goes into this little cup. The cup is always at the same height inside the fuel tank and it drinks out of the cup. The reason it doesn't drink straight out of the tank is because then you'd have a different mix if the tank was full or empty. And all these usually need is just the diaphragm, uh, which is just cheap as can be. And they never leak because there's no float to hold open. The fuel tank is lower than the carburetor. So it'll never flood your engine full of raw fuel. There was a lot of good things about it. So uh, just FYI, if you got something like that with the old style carburetor, there's nothing wrong with that. And this is just a standard filter they used on the newer ones that are facing the other way. A lot of the Toros use that one. Uh, pretty, pretty standard square filter, easy to come by and uh, it's not foam, just the pre-filter was foam. So uh, I'm going to put some gas in this. Let's see if it runs as is. Uh, usually those diaphragms though, if they have been run with the ethanol gas, they're hard as a rock and they won't pump the fuel anymore. So let's just see if this one, do we get lucky? I'm going to start by just putting some down the carburetor here. I just want to see if this engine even sounds right. Um, to begin with. Choke. Fast. And I think there is still some water in there, but that will come spraying out. I'll give you the shot in case it, in case it fires. Pull this stuff out of the way. Oh, it fires immediately. One thing about these is you just got to pull hard and steady because there's a lot of mass there with the flywheel for the chipper and that's why it uh, doesn't die that quickly either. So now I'm okay. Uh, sounds, it doesn't sound like we got a bad connecting rod. Everything sounds good. Valves must be opening and closing so let's give it some real fuel. Alright, we got enough fuel to fire. Choke fast. As I said, these ones may take a little while because it's got to fill up that first cup. So no sense uh, trying to, you know, pull your arm off. Just pull nice and steady and it'll, it'll pump if it's going to pump. I'm going to give it a little prime, see if once we get it started, maybe it'll go. Let's see if I got any left in here. Not even any. Wow. 
Let's give it some little juice there. It liked it. Okay, so what we got is a good running engine that is uh, not running because it can't supply its own fuel. Um, if I spray carburetor cleaner in the intake, it runs great on that, sounds like it revs up good, and it cannot supply its own fuel. So out the carburetor comes. Alright, now the air cleaner holder, let's just start taking things apart here. Take the uh, throttle assembly off here. Throttle and choke levers. This one happens to be Torx and flathead. One of those transitional years, I guess. She's on there. Anyway, bring it back. Okay, and that there was one screw in the back, and one of the screws that holds the carburetor down is the same. I guess that is the same. I thought that was Phillips. Nope. There we go. We'll take that, tilt that, and get that lever off of there. It's got a kill wire here. We'll just let that dangle. It's not going to be in anybody's way. Get that screw out before I lose it. And let's figure out where the other screws are. Here's one. But that muffler's still a little hot from testing, even that little bit. I got this. This is the PCV hose. It's got a little crack in it, so uh, maybe a little RTV or silicone would help seal that up. You just don't want unfiltered air going into your carburetor. Let's see, how many screws does this carburetor have? Another one under here. So this is the third. I think I'm going to switch over to Torx. Bring it back. Okay, I got the bolt that was here. Now I'm going to do one here. I think this one goes all the way through the carb and out the bottom. Is my best guess.
Yep, it's that long, so it goes through. Now the ones at the motor, at the block, those are hex and torques. I'll have to see what fits in there to get that out. All right, I'm going after this thing with the Torx T27. Might be a T30, but fits pretty darn nice, especially when you're on an angle. And the other one, yeah, we're not getting that one. Not with that tool. I'm going to go with the 3 8 from the side here. One way you could get at this is to drop the tank too. I'm going to try to not drop the tank too, but if we have to, I'm not opposed to it. Sometimes that's just as easy. Get the whole tank out with it. It's probably just a couple more bolts and it might be worth it. We'll see how it goes. And while I'm thinking about it, let's get these that uh, throttle assembly, governor assembly out of there. And then this one, I'll take this off. I'll do this now. 5 sixteenths. Just take this little lever right off the right off the carburetor there and then we'll be able to turn it to get those levers out of there, those actuator arms. Turn it a little, get that arm to come off. And then I'm going to put this arm right back how it was, if that's exactly how it was already. Probably messed that up already. I might have. I'll look at the re I'll look at the camera and see if it was if it was that one. That's pretty funny. Anyway, we'll put that back how it was once we get uh, everything else ready to go back in. That'll be on the reassembly side. This you just you know because I'm not taking the tank off right now. You're basically getting a sixteenth of a turn at a time, so I'll bring you back. Okay, I just got that bolt off. Just realized that that tank is just about off by itself, so I'm just going to find whatever hardware is under here that, sorry, under here that holds that on and take the whole tank. That way I can bolt all this together and then put it back on as an assembly. Might be easier. So way down at the bottom, there's a three-eighths bolt that I've just removed and that takes this thing off. Now the problem is we have all these arms going everywhere and we want to watch which hole they came in and out of. So it's a good idea if you're taking it apart and you're not so familiar. Now is a good time to take some photographs. This spring that I'm going to leave right where it is. Our gasket didn't even tear, by the way, which is beautiful. And this spring, I just need to lift up and up, up and out. And now we have a tank. And I think the tank is leaking. Yes, it is. That's not good. Okay, so right now that's the bolt hole that I took out. But this tank, now I know why it doesn't have any old fuel in it, because it won't hold fuel at all, because right there, there was a rust hole. And that is the problem when water gets in there, the rest of the tank is mint, and there is a hole right in the tank. That's disappointing. So I know the camera's, uh, the light's playing with the camera a little bit here on my reflective background, but right in the middle, I'm going to zoom in, and the more you touch it, the more that hole just caves in, because all the metal around it is real thin. It's not just the hole you see, it's, you know, thinned out all around it, so 
Uh, sealant might be an option for this one. Maybe. Give you a better view of that. So the more you would touch the sides here, the more you could technically break them out with just your finger. So right now, just to get you an idea of size, where am I? Oh gosh. You know, it's not not fingernail size at all. You could probably uh, not quite fit a pencil through there, quarter inch, let's say. Not terrible. So for this moment, I'm going to continue with uh, the carburetor rebuild, assuming I'm either going to get another tank or fix this one. And you're prying, and there's a seal under there, and then there's a diaphragm in here. There's a diaphragm uh, here, and there's one on the bottom. The one on the bottom is also the gasket. There we go. And you just got to kind of pull that out of there. Beautiful. And here's that little cup I was mentioning. This long tube picks up fuel, dumps it, dumps it out the diaphragm, which is, I don't know which hole, probably that hole right there. And then that goes into this cup, fills the cup. And then this is kind of like a standard carburetor with the bowl, what we would know today with the bowl. And then it's drinking out of always the same exact height fuel tank because its fuel tank is this little cup and this little cup just overflows back in when it when it has too much it overflows and then it's just constantly filling 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 and uh, so this gasket here's one gasket which has got a the, you know for the hole there and the hole there and then the main jet is here and the diaphragm is here that does everything. I thought this had the diaphragm on the bottom. Some of these have, are a little different than others apparently. This one has it on the side and it's just a little spring and two flappers, check valve. That makes That's the fuel pump. So I'm just gonna do the basics on this. Let's just see how far this was out by turning it in. One, half, it was about three quarters of the way three quarters of a turn from uh, put it all the way in and then back it out three quarters just to give you an idea where to start on the next time you put it in check the end of this clean that off and then I'll spray carburetor cleaner through the main jet and everywhere else I can find a spot for it so I'm gonna spray it of course inside this and it's coming out inside, which is good, meaning that hole is open. Again, I'm watching for it to come out where I'm putting it in, and then it's coming out in other places, so that's that passage is clear. That's probably the most important passage there is, being that all the fuel has to go through it. Just trying to see where else on this kind. I mean obviously you can get some in here but this has got a screen on it so the the chances of that being plugged aren't too high. And this lever just fell off so I'm gonna have to figure out how that goes back on. That's where you get in trouble as an amateur. Also I should take this off and blow through that. Yes, why did I not do that? Doing it now. Here's where your fuel pump diaphragm is. It's got two little flappers that are like a check valve. It uses the pulses from the engine. When the piston goes up and down, it creates pulses inside the crankcase, and this senses that and uh, makes the pumping action magically. No electricity needed. This is, is down on a pin here. It's set down on a pin so you can't put it wrong. I'm just trying to get one of the pieces that's hanging over a little bit maybe. There we go. Yep, 
and there's our diaphragm. This part goes up and down. Here's your flappers. Here's the holes that the flappers go over. Here's your spring. Possibly this could have been corroded. Ours looks like brand new. This actually doesn't seem all that hard, but you know, we're going to replace it. And then we'll blow through there, we'll blow through there, make sure all the passages, you can do it with compressed air if you don't believe it to be clogged. And we can see it comes right out the, the end, so we're sure that one's not clogged. Going the other way, that's not clogged, we're in good shape. Just need the diaphragm. Okay, so now we're without the gasket that you need for that. This particular model needed a carburetor kit number 5021. And you can see uh, these diaphragms, when they're new, they are absolutely supple, flexible, whatever. You just put the spring first and then the cup goes so you don't poke open your uh, diaphragm here. You can line that up with that pin that I mentioned earlier. And it's as simple as just making sure you don't have one of those flaps backwards, you know, or something. Just put it down nice and flat. I guess it helps if you put that on the right way. Screw that back together, it's literally that easy. Got the fuel pump cap screws back on. Now I will put the needle back in. Again, just go down until it stops. Don't crank it. You're only dealing with uh, thin, thin aluminum and stuff like that. So just go till it stops, you'll know. Right there. So it's like a quarter half that means three quarter out that's right where we started it'll probably run just fine right there now let's get out, out our imaginations folks and let's just say I fixed that tank my way you can do it your way whatever works for you to fix a tank replacing it is the right fix but it's a non pressurized tank it's only about four inches high, so there's really no PSI in there. So basically anything that you can do to make it gas tight, gasoline tight, is good enough. Worst case scenario, it drips out the bottom. Um, but do it your way. Um, but I guarantee I used the right stuff to fix it. So if anybody knows what that means, go ahead and try it for yourself. It's not too bad. I'm going to reuse this gasket. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's not torn. All it does is seal the tank to this. A purist would have dipped this in chem cleaner and cleaned all the 100%. I don't see a reason to. The internals are what we're concerned about here. All right, I'm going to start with the long screw here. Start getting it lined up. Just leave them all loose until you get them all in there. The other two, this one and this one, I'm not going to put in right now because those are the ones that that bracket, the throttle bracket goes on. I'm just going to put one in there just to make sure it lines up and then I'm going to just back, just leave it loose.
everything here as you can see basic hand tools nothing special and I can already see a mistake I made this had the clip to hold that didn't put that under there I could have made myself look like a genius with some creative editing like like a lot of other youtubers but uh, I'll actually admit I make mistakes Let me get you zoomed in here. Got you zoomed in here. Um, I'm going to use some of this gasket product, gasket maker product. I don't like using um, standard silicone. I like this stuff called Right Stuff. It seems to stick way better. It has more adhesive properties to it than the other stuff. If I can get it to come out of its own can here. I just kind of went inside that groove there, filled that up a little bit. This stuff has wonderful adhesive properties, much different than standard uh, RTV silicone. Um, really has some glue in it too, so that's kind of nice. That'll hold that just fine. That's just uh, air sucking in from the PCV, and you don't want it getting dirt sucking in, not getting filtered by the air filter first. Now, just so I don't have somebody messaging me in three, in three years from now, wondering how all these linkages go, here's how they go. The spring is on that little bent over clip there. This is the, the large rod that goes from the governor up to the back. This piece goes flat through that. This thing I had on backwards when I first redid it. Let me get you a close up of that. In case you've got a spring or one of these levers that didn't work right, that screw is contacts there. That's your low speed. Uh, that's where you would set how how slow it can go, and then that's just the max. And the other rod will go here once I get it back on the machine this rod I'm not sure that this rod is exactly right right now this is the choke I'm pretty sure that's the way it goes though and then this will end up going into that throttle and choke lever assembly but just uh, just so everybody's got a good look at how everything goes back because while you're taking it apart it's really easy to uh, get something out of track okay I've given the uh, tank sealant some time to dry and also the uh, sealant that I used there not fully cured but uh, we're getting there I'm just gonna start reassembling <clears throat> that's just a wire there I could disconnect but I'm gonna try to leave it trying to keep that out of the way so I can there we go. Get this in where it goes. Get that spring back on there. This is the bolt that goes in the bottom. I'm going to try to just get one of the top ones lined up first. I think that's going to be the best course of action. Let me get that torque size. It was actually easier on that one for the torques. That's 
asteroid bit. And that gasket on the engine is fine. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to reuse it. If you don't like reusing gaskets, don't. In a case like that, I feel I can get away with it, so I'm going to. Now for the hard one. I don't even know how I'm going to get the bolt started, but I'm going to think I think I'm just going to try to put it in there with pliers. get the bolt in the hole to get started with. I can even do that without dropping it. Bring it back. Got it in the hole, will it start threading by itself? Or will I have to push in on it? I think it's going, but I'll save you the trouble. Bring you back when it's tight. Okay, I just realized I messed up something else. This governor cable was supposed to go on to this instead of in there. So I am just going to bangle, mangle and bend it terrible because I don't feel like taking that all apart again. I'll just bend this back straight. Getting it back in the other side is no problem because this piece I can take off. There we go. It was supposed to go in this one. Let me finish tightening that before I forget. Sometimes you just do what works. That bolt went in there so nice the first time, I don't want to take it back off that lower one. No problems. I'll finish tightening up those manifold bolts because I was leaving them not all the way tight in case I couldn't get that to pull out of there, but it seems to work fine. Okay, got you zoomed in there close like I always try to. Now, uh, this particular one, the uh, throttle, there's a pin. And I assume that pin goes in here or in this loop. The choke is controlled here. That just goes on the lever end. So let's see if we got this stuff all lined up the right way. And if the uh, if this is all the way in there, yeah, it's going to fall into this hole, this loop. That lever should fall in that loop. Yep, there we go. And then I'm going to bolt the uh, carburetor screw back down in this last one.
Okay, we got those tightened. Now let's check for proper operation. We want to make sure that that choke plate is opening straight up and down when we say it's in off choke and we want to make sure it's closing. Yeah, we got it, we got it the right way. And then this pin is in our throttle thing and that seems to be activating just fine. Good. Again, a reusable gasket on the uh, bottom of the air filter plate. I'm going to reuse it. I'll back you out a little bit. Some people say, and you might want to close this just so you don't drop your screws down in the carburetor throat and have to take something back apart. Some people never reuse a gasket. Some people always reuse a gasket. Some people always reuse sealant with the gasket. Whatever you think is the right way, do that. There goes a screw. Just tried to get in there. Put them all in a little so they don't jump out. There we go, reassembled. For a sharp-eyed viewer, this, you might have noticed I didn't watch this as it went in, as I put the carburetor on. I've backed out the screw here. This is screw is for the, can't even show you, for that tube, holds down the tube, the PCV tube. So I'm gonna loosen that, get that out of there for a minute because it did not get hooked up to the piece down there, the rubber grommet that it goes in. Let me try to get you a shot here. Difficult spot. That rubber grommet is turned to the side and I suspect it wasn't connected to begin with because there is oil all over the place down there and that would be probably a result of that thing never being on there to begin with and the fact that the tube shows no sign of cleanliness or a, a dirt line tells me it was just hanging in midair sucking sucking air the whole time so now I can get this in there put it under the clip get this thing to line up and tighten the screw back down you should you should really connect that because otherwise it's going to be sucking raw air unfiltered into this tube and not providing your crankcase ventilation like it should. Let's get ourselves a new Briggs air filter. Perfect fit. This part should face out so it sucks not from the muffler but from the other way. You don't want to be sucking hot air in there. Okay, I put some fuel in it and I can already see we have an additional leak beyond the one I have repaired leaking down on the tire there. Not, not leaking bad enough where I really care but let's just give it a little prime just to get it started and let's see if she'll run. Fast choke. trying a little bit. That's a good sign. Fired there a little bit. Did I flood it already? Doubt it.
Well, looks like we got work to do on the fuel system. I gotta get some rags quick. Anyway, beyond the uh, gas tank issue, I declare this one Wildwood certified. Thanks for watching. So I got it sitting on the side right now. So none of the fuels in the area that's leaking. And the area that's leaking is this little part right here. There's a little half moon. I don't know if the camera can kind of pick that up. There's a little half moon area about the size of a half dollar. And they stick, sit that at the bottom of the tank. I assume that is to collect any water that might be, be in your tank and keep it away from the active fuel. Well, the problem is it rusted out the tank there, which is an additional hole to the one that I already knew about. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it just the same way I fixed the other one, which wasn't leaking, and uh, put this back together. A little bonus footage for you here. Sometimes you can reuse these if you get lucky. They're only made kind of for one-time use, but worst case scenario is I'll drill a hole and um, put a pin in it if I don't have one of these one-way washers. Not sure what they call those. I don't think they're Belleville washers, but it's something like that. Sometimes you can get them off, sometimes you can't. I'll save you the trouble. Just a lot of prying and swearing. Okay, end result. I just cut it with an end nippers so I can get at my wheel like I want to. I just might not have these in stock, that's all. I think the camera can just pick it up. It's, it's right here is where the issue is. There's a little Thing. I assume this is to prevent, you know, catch your, any water that's at the bottom of your tank and not let it get sucked up into the carburetor. And of course, that would be a likely spot for it to leak. And it did. There's two separate holes. You got them cleaned off pretty good. I'm going to put some carburetor clean around that and use the type of sealant that I like to use and put it back together. Let that fully dry, put the sealant on, call it a day. Thanks for watching.